uh, I was surprised that people did not realize the, the magnitude of the Optimus robot program. Uh, those who are insightful or look, listen carefully will understand. Uh, that is a man dancing in spandex, right? That Optimus ultimately will be worth more than the car business. You heard it right, folks. The genius who premiered his robot technology like this, while other robotics companies were premiering their technology like this, says that only if you're truly insightful and listen carefully to his words, the white paper, the white paper, all glory to the white paper, you will understand just how truly profound his advance in robotics is. I wonder if this will age as well as his other great inventions. So we, we get to um, use rocket technology to build tunnels. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> I give you Elon Musk, the world's most successful techno Ponzi salesman. Techno Ponzi, inflating the value of your company by making impossible claims. We've made it possible to run comprehensive laboratory tests from a tiny sample or a few drops of blood that could be taken from a finger. Then cloak what you're doing in noble causes to protect it from criticism. Like you just want to make healthcare affordable as a, as a human right. The information is only actionable if it is of the highest level of integrity. I, I think about it as my mom goes to get a test in one of these locations. SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and Boring Company are philanthropy. If you say philanthropy is love of humanity, um, they are philanthropy. I want to know every single time that that data is flawless, no matter what. World in which you don't have to say goodbye too soon. In a world in which people don't have to say goodbye too soon. Goodbye too soon. I mean, how could you be against a company trying to do this? So a good example would be Elizabeth Holmes and her $9 billion company, whose value was based almost entirely on vaporware promises. In this 2010 PowerPoint, Theranos showcased an early version of Edison, a portable blood testing machine that could be deployed in pharmacies all over the world. And that's, that's I think, really quite, quite profound. Um, this, I think, will be quite, quite profound because... If... According to Walgreens, Theranos said their technology had been comprehensively validated and was viable and consumer ready. We're, we're confident that this is a product that is better in every way from a future standpoint, that wins on economics against uh, uh, diesel trucks in a worst case scenario, and that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. And pr production begins 2019. So if you order now, get the car, the truck in two years. And just like the Tesla Roadster premiered at the same event, it wasn't ready in 2019. But they were really confident it would be ready for 2020. Then 2021. And now it's 2022, and there is still no sign of anything. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. But hey, now they're, they're really confident that they're going to have them in production by 2023. Production begins 2019. So if you order now, get the car, the truck in two years. And uh, in, in the and it's Cybertruck is coming next year. We'll be in production with Cybertruck next year. Uh, we'll be in production with the Roadster and with Semi. So that's all. All coming. Now, I'm sure you'll get the odd Elizabeth Holmes defender saying, but it wasn't all vaporware. Theranos actually did some blood tests. Your health is really important to us. The kids adore you. <laughs> Theranos gift cards, because nothing is more important than the health of those you love. So how can it be vaporware if they're actually doing something? Well, yeah, the company wasn't valued at about $9 billion because of some routine blood test. The company that she started at 19 is valued at $9 billion. You own over 50% of it, right? Congratulations on that. <laughs> Just like Tesla isn't valued at the best part of a trillion dollars, as, as much as the rest of the American auto industry put together, because it produces about 1% of the cars in America.
And that's glossing over the fact that they don't even make their own batteries. They just buy them off Panasonic. And it's certainly not because they're a great solar leader or anything. They buy their solar panels from China. Yeah, it's not worth a trillion dollars for making 1% of the cars in America. It's because of vaporware promises like this. What I can say is we're going to move to just truly massive scale. Uh, scale that uh, no company has uh, ever achieved in, in, in the history of humanity. Uh, and, and then, of course, we've got the Tesla robot, Optimus. Uh, this is... Uh, I think, I think, I think Optimus will, will obviate what uh, it even means, what an economy even means. It may be hard to imagine it, but as you, as you see Optimus develop, but it's, it's really going to transform the, the world, uh, I think, to a degree even greater than the cars. And there'll be loads of people in the comments saying that it's really unfair to compare Elizabeth Holmes to Elon Musk. And you're right, it is. At least Elizabeth Holmes had something that looked credibly like a blood testing machine. Forbes magazine has downgraded the net worth of Elizabeth Holmes from $4.5 billion to nothing. Now, Ponzi schemes can be successful for a long time, essentially burning capital. The money that people give them, well, you know, con out of them, to make the company look successful. Bernie Madoff ran the largest Ponzi scheme in the world for about 30 or so years. And for those 30 years, he was unparalleled in his ability to make a constant profit for his clients. To the point that only a fool would have taken their money out of such a scheme and he had clients queuing up to invest with him. However, all he was really doing was claiming profits and occasionally paying people money back out of what they'd given him. A similar thing is the pump and dump scheme, where you inflate your stock price and then sell some of it off to buy something that will actually hold value. Although, naturally, if you're doing this on a large scale, it's actually quite difficult to find something that'll cost several billion dollars. Naturally, all Ponzi schemes look like an amazing investment at the time. But no one in the world can even scratch Elon Musk to what he claims are going to be his techno-Ponzi returns on investment. Bernie Madoff, you know, the guy with the largest Ponzi scheme in history, was claiming a mere 10% return per year on investment. Back in 2019, Elon Musk claimed that they'd invented a robo-taxi that would only cost like $25,000 that would make you $30,000 profit per year. If you say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo-taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of $30,000 per year, uh, and we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year, with no one in them, next year. Just let that sink in for a second. The largest Ponzi scheme in history was only promising about 10% returns per year. Elon Musk was promising 100% returns per year. All you had to do was uh, buy a car from him. The fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. That's a common swindler's trick. And this was promoted by other things like this almost certainly faked full self-driving video. I say faked because it seems a little curious that they should have had a fully functional self-driving system in 2019. But now, in 2022, after another few years of research, their uh, full self-driving requires the driver to have his hands on the steering wheel at all times, paying full attention to the road, because Tesla uh, full self-driving may do the wrong thing at the worst time. But of course, Elon Musk is still very, very confident that he'll have full self-driving working next year. I mean, sure, the last nine years he made this claim, he was wrong. But he's very confident that he's right this time. Yes, pay no attention to the leaked emails between Tesla and regulators that say it will never be full self-driving. All from the man who promised you that Smart Summon would be able to summon your car anywhere in America. Just push a button and it would come all the way from LA to New York for you. That was in 2016. In 2022, this is what Smart Summon looks like in an airport. And of course it goes without saying that no one ever got their robo taxi that would generate them $30,000 profit per year. 
you kind of start to believe that maybe you're the one who's crazy, right? Because everyone else thinks this woman's great. Everyone else wants to throw money at her, wants to be on board with this, and wants to be a part of it. But I'm beginning to think Elon Musk just doesn't care anymore. I mean, most people, if you ask them for the three biggest scams of Elon Musk, would probably come out with the uh, Hyperloop. You know, where the world's most advanced Hyperloop company, a decade or so on, and half a billion dollars later, has just laid off half of its staff and announced that it's not even going to bother trying to transport people anymore. Anyway, so that's... You think this is possible? This is not just... Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Followed by claiming to be the world's most advanced robotics company. The uh, specialized actuators and sensors that are needed for a humanoid robot. People have no idea. This is, this is going to be bigger than the car. And probably third would be the boring tunnels, which in my last video, I showed how their brand new boring machine using a rocket technology to dig tunnels went about 10 times slower than a regular boring machine and took about six months to dig a single lane underpass under a car lot. Well, guess which projects Elon Musk promoted this week. Well, first he responded to this tweet with world statistics, cities with the worst traffic in the world, London, Paris, Brussels, Moscow, New York City, and so forth. To which Elon Musk replies, tunnels anyone? Wow, a brilliant idea, Elon. If only people in, say, London hadn't thought of, say, a, a system of tunnels, maybe um tunnels, not overground, maybe tunnels underground as a way of transporting people, then then that would completely revolutionise the way they can get around London. And maybe if they did it in some sort of, oh, I don't know, carriage that would carry like a thousand people and didn't require a driver, some sort of automated self-driving system on sort of on steel rails or something, you know, rather than say a, a taxi, which requires a person to drive it through a tight tunnel and only carries three people maximum. That would be revolutionary if only they had a system like that in, say, London, or Paris, or Brussels, or Moscow, or New York. That would be amazing. Thank God we had Elon Musk to come up with such brilliant revolutionary ideas about transport. Yes, digging more tunnels, it can only mean love for humanity. Warren Company is trying to solve traffic, which is health for most people, and uh, that also it was like right. the utter failure of the boring company i went over in my last video the cult of musk which we'll come back to because the original vision was high speed point to point transport that would take you anywhere in los angeles for a dollar it's a little bit but how much would it cost to travel from lax to sherman oaks well i think it was like a dollar one dollar yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and ended up delivering a slow-moving, chauffeur-driven taxi rank in a storm drain that in their latest and greatest project will take you all the way across the car lot, or if you believe the boring company's biggest fans, for the incredible price of $5. Mm. A ticket is going to cost around $5. If you kind of uh, convert that over, the revenue per mile per passenger is $10.31. Now that is... Damn good, a lot, lot better than what a typical bus journey is. This is what I mean about the cult of Musk. I mean, most people would understand that one of the things that you want out of a public mass transport system is that it has to be cheap. The lower the cost per mile, the better. Not in the minds of the cult of Musk. There, the higher the cost per mile, the better, because that means it's making more profit for Elon Musk. Revenue per mile per passenger is ten dollars and thirty one cents. Now that is damn good, a lot, lot better than what a typical bus journey is. Of course, it's so obvious now. Why don't buses just raise their prices by a factor of ten? Then finally, they could compete in price with the loop. Welcome to the cult of Musk, where believing absurdities isn't optional; it's mandatory. Yeah. However, what I didn't cover in that last video is the Boring Company currently has a valuation of about $6 billion. Their most valuable contract so far was the One Mile Vegas Loop System costs about $50 million. Uh, Boring Company and Neuralink are uh, both under 200 people. 
So uh, they're little, little tiny companies. When your valuation is that high, you don't have to run a business. You can do it all just by burning capital. You know, kind of like um, a Ponzi scheme. It'll work fine as long as people believe this is some revolutionary technology. So this is about a year after Elon Musk first premiered his Dancing Spandex Man, which is still the most advanced uh, robotics that Tesla have demonstrated. And the cult of Musk? As I, as I think more about this incredible array of things that you're involved with, I keep seeing these synergies. You know, for example, the robots you're building from Tesla could possibly be pretty handy on Mars. Sure. Maybe the Boring Company could play a role helping create some of the subterranean um, dwelling spaces that you might need. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the robots you're building. And of course, this is a few years now after Musk unveiled his slow-moving taxis in storm drains. Cult of Musk? Um, back on planet Earth, it, it seems like a partnership between Boring Company and Tesla could offer an unbelievable deal to a city. Believe in absurdities isn't optional. It's mandatory. To say, we, we will create for you a 3D network of tunnels populated by robo-taxis yeah. that will offer fast, low-cost transport to anyone. And this video from late April 2022 now has almost 6 million views. And if you want to know why I make these videos, just have a depressing read through the comments. Like I was saying, believing the absurd isn't optional, it's mandatory. But not content with the idea of selling the revolutionary entrepreneurial idea of tunnel transport to London, he then went on to say, in the coming years, the Boring Company will attempt to build a working Hyperloop. From a known physics standpoint, this is the fastest possible way of getting from one city center to another for distances less than 2,000 miles. Starship is faster for longer journeys. Well, actually, seeing as we're dealing with uh, which fantasy method of transport is quicker than which other one, I think you'll find that the sling ring is the fastest way of transport between one place and another for, for shorter distances. Of course, warp drive works better for long distances or those instant teleporters, which for some reason Elon Musk hasn't said that he's the inventor of yet. You know, like when he claimed he had invented a fifth mode of transport. Well, this one gets interesting. The fourth one, I'm considering just open sourcing. You know, basically just describing the idea, saying this is what will be done, and, um, and if somebody wants to do it, then, then they can do it. Meanwhile, 25 years ago, over 10 years before Elon Musk said this. So I'm sort of debating it, but it would be for, for a fifth mode of transport. So right now we've got of terrestrial transport. We've got planes, uh, trains, automobiles, and boats. Mm -hmm. And for what if there was a fifth mode? Um, and uh, I, I have a name for it. <laughs> name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. A new means of underground transport similar to a wheelless train. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. Look, like um, you just get in it, whisks you? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you the characteristics. Similar to a wheelless train or a wingless aeroplane, able to carry passengers in perfect safety at over 500 kilometers an hour, that's what Swiss Metro is proposing. From downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in under 30 minutes. It will travel at over 500 kilometers an hour in small diameter tunnels situated some 50 meters below the surface connect. After passing the checking gate, they will take the lift down to the boarding station. A system of airlocks will hold the vehicle hermetically attached to the embarkation zone permitting passengers to board without noticing the partial vacuum in the tunnels. To reduce aerodynamic drag and keep the tunnel diameter as small as possible, it will be necessary to evacuate air from the tunnel, creating a partial vacuum similar to atmospheric conditions at an altitude of 15,000 meters. Um, and it would cost you uh, much less um, than, than an air ticket or Cart, much less than any other mode of transport. Indeed, if we take account of the occupancy rates of all means of transport, Swiss Metro will be far faster and cheaper than car or train. This great advantage will undoubtedly count towards its success. Um, it goes uh, 
uh, three or four times faster than the, 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 the sort of bullet train that's You're being built. Passengers will take their seats in the modern Swiss Metro shuttle and will reach their destinations in just a few minutes. And so, so the system I have in mind, which is you've, you've sort of you're guessing in the right direction. Um, so how, how would you like something that uh, can never crash? Able to carry passengers in perfect safety. Um, it is immune to weather. And it would cost you much less than, than an air ticket. Yes, about 15 years after Swiss Metro's video, Elon Musk described every part of their video in detail and claimed it was his idea. And yes, because he was so generous and really cared about civilization, he was going to patent it and oh so generously open source it and license it to anyone who could make a credible case they could make it work. Um, but I, I'm thinking like maybe I should patent it and then offer to open source the patent to anyone that can make a credible case that they could actually do it. You know, along with the other modes of transport he had invented, like the uh, train, the plane, and the automobile. Oh, sorry, the tubopod, the wingatron, and the hyper minipod. Hell, this video had been on YouTube for over two years before Elon Musk came up with the new idea of the fifth mode of transport. And even more remarkable is that Wiki, to this day, still has that the concept of the Hyperloop was open sourced by Musk and SpaceX. Even though it's factually wrong on every conceivable level, the Musk fans somehow managed to keep that stuff up on Wikipedia. Not that it's terribly relevant, of course, because the Hyperloop, sorry, the vacuum train is over a hundred year old idea and is no more economically viable now than it was a hundred years ago. And this is what I mean when I say he just doesn't care anymore. The boring company chimes in, Hyperloop testing at full scale begins this year. And the Musk fans chime in, where can I buy me some shares? Cha-ching! This is the cult of Musk. They're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year. Uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Then there was Tesla's attempt to show that we're an advanced robotics company via a man dancing in spandex. You know, ignoring the fact that we have gazillions of robots already that do high-value, precision work. Because you know what would be really stupid would be to make a super expensive, super advanced robot and then make it do menial tasks. I mean, no one outside of a cult could possibly take that as a reasonable proposal. Right? Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the short to medium term economics of the bot. I guess I understand the long term vision of replacing physical labor, but I also think repetitive, dangerous, and boring tasks tend to not be so highly compensated. And so I just don't see how to reproduce the, you know, start with a supercar and then break into like the lower end of the market. How do you do that for a robot humanoid? But this is the cult of mask. Well, I guess you'll just have to see. <laughs> Even though what he's saying is clearly preposterous, they still buy into it hook, line, and sinker. All without the slightest hint of sentient intelligence. It's gonna be this 5'8 robot, about 125 pounds. Um, it's gonna only move five miles an hour, so it's like slower than a human, so don't worry, it's not gonna be able to like, you can run, chase it, or like run away from it and beat it up. They try to make that so it's not too scary black. So making this robot that's kind of like a generally, a, you know, white color, very friendly looking, kind of soft looking, even though it's going to be made out of obviously hard plastics and stuff, they've rounded the corners to make it look, you know, generally soft. Dude, the nearest thing they had to robot technology there was Spandex Man. And it wasn't just the Tesla fans who went absolutely ballistic for this uh, robot a year ago. The mainstream media were all over it as well. Elon Musk is promoting a new invention that looks a lot like you and me. You're looking at his plans for a humanoid robot called Teslabot. Now we take a look to the future. Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced he's building a humanoid robot. Daily Beast, Elon Musk unveils friendly Tesla humanoid robot. Fox News, Elon Musk introduces humanoid robot prototype. Newsweek, Tesla is developing a humanoid robot powered by artificial NBC intelligence. News. Elon Musk says Tesla will produce a humanoid Digital robot. Tesla's latest new scientist. Tesla is building an start IGN. Washington Post says developing a humanoid robot. 
that will perform menial tasks and won't fight back. Now, when Elon Musk put all of this out, he claimed that Tesla was already arguably the largest robotics company on the planet. Uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. But now, with the software update, you can actually make thousands of people drive safer just with a software update overnight. Wow. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car. That's actually, yeah, that's actually. <laughs> neural nets, recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world. <laughs> Are we gonna have to cut that? Uh, it it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Engage, Tesla, full self-driving. You are experiencing a car accident. Now, it's often difficult to reach people in a cult because, as it's been noted before, it's easier to con people than to convince them they've been conned. But maybe we can help them out here a little. Maybe some sort of challenge, a direct challenge to Tesla. You see, we've just set up this company called Better Than Felon Musk's Optimus Robotics, or BTFO Robotics for short. Our goal is nothing short of revolutionizing mankind by outcompeting Tesla massively. You see, it's about nine months ago that Elon Musk said that he's, he was confident that he would have a prototype within a year. So he's already got a nine month head start on us. We are confident at that time any of our prototype robotic solutions will be able to outperform anything that the Tesla bot can do. In fact, we could probably already take the title of world's best robotics company of Tesla simply because our robot is already available in lots of different colors. So you might want to let the uh, techno Ponzi salesman and of course the uh, Colton Musk know that now he's got some serious competition in the robotics world. Because something tells me in a few months he's going to get BTFO'd by BTFO Robotics. Engage Tesla full self-aiming. Thank you for installing Tesla Full Self Aiming, a variant that allows you to hit things Elon Musk is very confident will be available next year. And that's today's video, because believe me, you take a look around and the hero worship that you get in this TED interview, and yet that is the same TED that was so nice to Elizabeth Holmes all those years ago. And if you think that's bad, you should try going to one of the Elon Musk fan sites. I'm not kidding you when I say the cult of Musk. There, his promises are taken as actual achievements. And that's the overwhelming norm, not the exception. Which is why it's important that there are at least some voices of sanity out there calling out this bullshit. So if you like that, drop a thumbs up on it. And maybe more importantly, share it with as many people as possible because he's still pushing the hyperloop for pity's sake. And maybe if you really enjoyed this video and want to support this channel directly, you can do it through Patreon. As ever, thanks for watching.